My name is Michael Sanders and I want to help you become a better investor. And the way that I am going to do that is I am going to teach you through the, the strategies that I used to earn my first million dollars within five years of me getting out of prison. That was a very strategic goal that I set and I described that in the previous video that I just created and it's the first video on this playlist about how to invest. To become a good investor, I really believe that we need to know something about business, which is why I am creating this fictional business here called Michael's Hot Dogs. It is the case study that I am using to teach more people how to become investors. And remember, I am creating this case study and this entire course primarily for young people or people who are living in struggle, people who may not know much of anything about investing or about business, yet they are making decisions that can influence the rest of their lives. So I just want to share the strategies that worked for me, because if I could go through 26 years in prison, come back successfully, I absolutely am convinced that anyone else can do the same if they follow along this principled path of thinking differently, of making values-based, goal-oriented decisions. Now to get started, First, if I were going to start a business, Michael's Hot Dog Stands, the first thing that I would need would be working capital. What is working capital? It's just money. I would need money to get started. Now, since I just got out of prison, I didn't have much of anything in the way of financial resources, and I didn't have credit either. And that, ta that, is, that goes to this, this concept that I'm talking about is why you have to think differently. If you are a young person, if you're an individual who's, who doesn't have credit or has had some struggle or some challenges in the past, then it's really important to begin thinking creatively. Think about what can you do to overcome hurdles. I had to overcome the hurdle of getting started after prison, and I did that by thinking differently. So to become successful in business or as an investor, we need to learn about money, about credit, about traditional lenders like banks, and we need to know how does a bank go about lending somebody money. Well, ordinarily they rely upon many factors, including an individual's credit score, but I didn't have any credit because I'd been incarcerated for so long. So I had to be thinking about what other options exist for me to raise the capital that I would need to launch this new business that I'm calling Michael's Hot Dog Stands. And if you haven't read my free book, Prison to Paradise, you'll kind of know the genesis of this idea of starting a hot dog stand business. It is because I realized that's about the only type of business I would be qualified to run would be a hot dog stand. But even to do that, even to run something simple like a hot dog stand, I would still need working capital. And because of my background, I would have to go to unconventional sources to raise capital, to raise the money that I would need to get this business off the ground. So while I was incarcerated, I learned a lot about critical thinking skills and those that, that, uh, con that gave me a level of confidence that I could look for um, capital from unconventional sources. One unconventional source would be to look for individuals that might help lend me money, right? They, they, they're not a financial institution, it's just an individual. And if I could persuade somebody to lend me money, that would be one option of getting, of getting capital. Another would be to find an investor to join my venture. And to do that, I would have to sell equity in the venture. I could either raise capital by selling equity, okay, equity, or I could raise capital by selling debt or raise capital through debt. And I hope that you're going to be able to see this through this video. Um, but, I, but these are the two concepts that are really essential and we're going to discuss both. Now, regardless of whether I chose to raise capital by selling equity or by raising debt, I would need to create a business entity. And that means I would need, I, I need to have some understanding of how to structure a business to build an entity. And there are many different types of business entities. You might be familiar with some of them, like a sole proprietorship, 
Okay, that's, that means I am an individual and I start a business and I'm the only owner of this business. I don't even need a, a specific tax ID number for that. I can just use my social security number. That's called a sole proprietorship. Another type of business that I could start or business structure might be a, a partnership where I, I, I start a business with somebody else and we're partners in the business. But a third type of business would be some form of a corporation either a limited liability corporation or a subchapter S corporation or a type C corporation. Each type of business structure has its purpose. But for the purposes of this case study that I'm creating with Michael's Hot Dogs, I knew that a corporate structure would suit me best. So starting a corporation is really not as complicated as it sounds. It's really just filing some basic paperwork with the Secretary of State for the state where you live or where you want to register your corporation and also filing some, some paperwork with the Internal Revenue Service. Once you file, once I filed the paperwork for Michael's hot dog stands after it went through its little process, it takes a couple of days or sometimes a couple of weeks, the Secretary of State will send you notification that your business is registered and the Internal Revenue Service will also send you information that you have an employee identification number, an EIN. Once you have that EIN and you have this, this paperwork from the Secretary of State, you would have the documents that you need to reflect that you actually have a registered corporate entity. And then you may need some additional business license, licenses from a local government or a municipality, but you're going to start by setting up your business entity and registering it with the Secretary of State and with the IRS. That is what's necessary to start my business, Michael's Hot Dog Stands. And once I started my business, the next step I could take would be to go to a bank with my official documentation and, and open a corporate bank account. I would just need the paperwork for my Secretary of State and the EIN number, and then the bank would open up a corporate account, and that corporate account is completely separate from me, Michael Santos, as an individual. It is the entity, Michael's Hot Dogs, becomes its own entity with its own taxpayer ID number, its own ability to hire employees and carry on business. That's what it takes to form a corporation. And once you do that, this corporation becomes an asset, something of value in its own right. And it's really important to understand what an asset is and how we can use that to build our prosperity. But of course, starting a business doesn't necessarily mean you've done anything to, uh, to build your prosperity. That just becomes a vehicle. Next, we need to do is raise some working capital for the corporation. I know that I would have had to have done that because I was in prison and I didn't have any cash to put into the business. So I'd have to do a couple of things. And one of the first things that I might do is work to persuade an investor to buy a piece of this asset. I want to sell a piece of this asset. So what I'd like you to do right now for the purposes of this this uh, lesson is to understand what does that mean? Well, a corporation is, for some people, it's a little bit difficult to understand. So I'm going to use the analogy of a pizza. I frequently would do this when I try to explain people what, uh, how corporations are divided up, right, into different owners. So you can think of a, a pizza pie. In fact, I've got a pizza that I just ordered tonight. And a pizza can be divided into you know different pieces right you got one piece two piece three pieces four pieces but all four pieces or four slices are what makes up the entire pizza pie i could easily divide it up into eight pieces right and all eight pieces equal the pizza pie okay well a corporation is similar to that in the sense that you have one whole but it's divided into pieces now, in a corporation, we don't call them pieces or slices. We call the different, the different segments of the corporation a corporate share, right? You may have heard about that in the stock market, shares of stock. That's really just a piece of a corporation. And it's important to understand that every piece of the corporation is actually a share of the entire business. 
So we don't necessarily know everything about a, a corporation when we just say that we have some pieces of the corporation, some shares. We have to know how many shares there are in the corporation in order for us to make more sense of stock and, and how many share, how much each price of stock is worth. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more if I, as I move closer, move deeper into this lesson plan. But for the purposes of Michael's hot dogs, I'd like you to know how many pieces, how many shares that I create in the corporation. And I chose to create this Michael's hot dogs with 1,500 shares, okay? 1,500 shares of stock is in Michael's hot dogs. Okay, now that's what's important for you to understand is just as with this pizza, I could have divided it into four, I could have divided it into eight, I could have divided it into 80, right? It doesn't matter. It's all one pizza. It's all one corporation. But there are 1,500 separate shares of this corporation. I, but that's just an arbitrary number that I chose because I wanted to develop this lesson plan in a manner that I could easily explain. I could have just as easily divided the corporation into a hundred shares or into a thousand shares or into a million shares. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that I am very clear with what I am doing and I have a reason for what I am doing. The question is, if I have 1,500 shares, what's each share of the stock worth? Okay, that is an important lesson for any investor. How do we measure a corporation's worth? And I can tell you, it doesn't matter what I say the asset or the corporation is worth. The only thing that matters is what does the next person in the marketplace say the asset is worth? That's why it is so important to, for, as an investor to start with an understanding of businesses and assets because all of these have value in the marketplace. And if you are living in struggle, you may need to go out and create your own job. The more you understand about how businesses are structured, how assets are structured, how investments are structured, the better the position that you are in to start leveraging your way into something bigger. Same thing as if you're a young person. If you're a young person embarking upon your life and you are making strategic decisions like whether to take on student loan debt, what to do with your life, whether to continue with your education as it is. It's important to think about this as an investment and how you are making an investment in your education, or you could be making an investment in launching a business, or you could be making an investment in starting to acquire assets. Regardless of what you choose, you will be making a decision. And the more you educate yourself on learning about business and investments, the better position you will be in to make a very good decision. And that's what I want to strive to teach you at, through these courses. So that's it, that's it for now in a bite-sized piece. I'm going to come back to talk a little bit more about the structure of Michael's Hot Dogs, the corporation, and what I did to raise working capital using both equity and debt.